always determined by the noise. Now, noise is generally given in terms of what's called dark current, which is the amount of current that's going to come out of your photomultiplier tube in complete darkness, um, because you always have this, this noise. And so the limit of detection, this is a, a rule of thumb. There are ways around this, as we'll learn in the next couple of weeks. But the rule of thumb is that when the signal due to the light you're looking for is equal to the amount of current you get from the noise, that that's the limit of your detection. In other words, the signal-to-noise ratio is 1. And the dark current, of course, depends on many factors like temperature, the voltage applied, and things like that. And we can see that, that of course, the, the, the dark current is very small at low voltages but starts to increase just along with the gain at fairly high voltages, as can be shown in the curve down here. If we look at how the dark current um, depends on temperature, we can see at room temperature about 25 degrees Celsius, let's go ahead and do red ink here, that the dark current is, in fact, almost an order of magnitude bigger as it is than at freezing temperature, zero degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we were to cool our detector even more, we could see this sort of uh, power of 10 change in the dark current. Um, so just make a note of the fact that the dark current is, in fact, temperature dependent, although we're not going to use this anymore in this lecture. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and solve a problem. Let's say we have a wavelength that we're trying to detect of 400 nanometers, and let's say we are putting V equals 600 volts on our photomultiplier tube. That's what we're operating at. Um, if we go back and we looked at the gain at 600 volt supply voltage, we see that point right there. There's 600 volts. And our gain looks to be about 10 to the fifth, or 100,000. Okay? Um, we knew from the previous slide that the quantum efficiency at 400 nanometers is equal to 20%, or 0.2. Um, and we can look up the dark current at 600 volts right here. And that looks to be on the order, I dark, of looks to me like 2 times 10 to the minus 12 amps, or 2 picoamps of dark current at a bias voltage of 600 volts. OK? So let's look at the limit, the minimum optical signal we can detect at 400 nanometers, 600 volt bias, given our quantum efficiency of 0 0.2, our dark current of 200 picoamps, and our gain of 100,000. Um, well, we know that the number of electrons that we generate from our photocathode is equal to 0.2 times the number of photons in sub p uh, because of our quantum efficiency. And we know that the limit of detection, our dark current, ID is equal to 2 times 10 to the minus 12 amps, okay? And then if we divide this by the charge on an electron, 19 coulombs, we find out that the number of electrons from our dark current is equal to 1.25 times 10 to the 7th electrons per second. Now what we want to do is find the number of photons that have to hit the detector in order to give a value approaching the dark current. So let's take a look at that. Well the number of photons essentially is just going to be the number of electrons divided by the quantum efficiency, which is 0.2, so we just multiply that by 5, and we get 6.25 times 10 to the 7th photons per second that would need to hit the photocathode in order to create the dark current. Um, but for every photon that hits and generates an electron, those electrons are amplified by a factor of 100,000 or 10 to the fifth. Um, so in fact, the number of photons that we generate is, or the number of electrons we're going to see that's equal to the dark current is in fact 100,000 times smaller than that, 
So the number of photons we actually look at is going to be 6.25 times 10 to the second. Because all I did was take the original number of photons here and divide it by my gain, which is 10 to the fifth. And that gives me the number of photons that hits and then get amplified to give our dark current at 600 volts. Well, let's find out how many watts of power that is at 400 nanometers in order to give me the signal to noise ratio of 1 or a signal that's equal to my dark current. Well, we've got 6.25 times 10 to the 2 or 625 photons. Okay. And we know that each photon carries an energy of hc over lambda. Okay. So we've got hc over lambda joules per photon times 625 photons per second that will give me the number of electrons per second or the current that's equal to my dark current. And when I go ahead and plug this all into my calculator, let's see, we've got 6.62 times 10 to the negative 34 times 3 exponential 8 meters per second. And we need to divide that by 400 exponential minus 9 wavelength in nanometers. And that's not giving me a reasonable number, so let me go ahead and redo this calculation one more time. 6.62 exponential 34, change sign, enter, 3 exponential 8 times 400 exponential 9, change sign, divide. And I come out to 4.97 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per photon times 625 photons per second. And that gives me P noise, or the, the optical power that's equal to my noise power, of approximately 3 times 10 to the minus 16 watts. So in fact, you see that the photomultiplier tube, looking at 400 nanometers biased at 600 volts, is extremely sensitive to very, very small amounts of light. We're talking on the order of uh, femtowatts of power, sub-femtowatts of power that we can detect here. And so, in summary, a photomultiplier tube is an extremely effective detector. They operate at high voltages and they're rather delicate because they are glass encapsulated tubes as opposed to other types of detectors we'll look at, but they can be extremely sensitive and are used in the most sensitive of scientific applications and in astronomical applications where you're really looking at a small number of photons coming from very, very dis distant stars. They're also used in many types of medical detectors. Uh, where you're trying to put radiation through the human body and in, in x-rays and things like that. And it is an option for you to use a photomultiplier tube in your spectrophotometer, but you'll have to weigh the trade-offs. In the next coming series of lectures, we'll look at photodiodes, which are another type of detector that have some advantages and disadvantages compared to photomultiplier tubes, and ways you can actually improve this noise figure by doing some electronic filtering afterwards.